I hate doing introductions. Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you've been having a really nice weekend so far. Today's video is going to be super simple. It's just a bunch of philodendrons. I'm extra loving these days. I think I have, I have exactly 10 plants to go through today. Um, and they're not like, it's not really a monthly favorites video. It's just plants that I've been appreciating a little bit extra, which I guess is a favorites video, but they're not all like my favorites. You know what I mean? They're just like, I'm appreciating them a little bit more these days. Um, yeah, so I have 10 plants to show you. Um, before I get into those, I just wanted to talk about uh, what's coming up in the future. My most highly requested video um, to make is the micro video. And then after that, my second most highly requested is substrates. And then following from that, um, how to optimize your substrate. So like amendments, pH, things like that. So I put up an, a question box on Instagram asking what you want me to cover in a, in a substrates video, including pH. And I got some really, really good questions actually. So I do want to do that topic justice, even though I'm not the expert, I want to do as good of a job as I can on it. So that's going to be coming up later. There's a ton of work to be done on that. Like beyond just the research, I have to do a lot of testing on my own things first because I haven't, I haven't done pH testing on my water and my uh, solutions for over a year now. And I'm pretty sure my city has changed the water since then. So I'm well overdue for, for all that anyways. So yeah, um, so that's coming up and I think that's all I had to say. So let's just get started on the plants. Okay, first plant. I would have shown this in my plant tour. Actually, I show this all the time on my Instagram. So this is this was sold to me as a Plumanii. Well, I got this plant from Erin and she got it as a Plumanii. Um, I'm uncertain of the ID. It doesn't look very Plumanii-esque, as you can see, like those veins are super close together. They're not as spaced out and there's a lot more of them. They're not as sunken as Plumanii should be, I think. So I actually don't think it's a Plumanii. It does have very small amount of ruffles. It does have a very small amount of ruffling on the petiole, but for a Plumanii, I would expect it to have a bit more. I'm not even sure if that's focusing on the petiole there, but yeah, um, someone commented on one of my Instagram posts of this plant and said it looks like the Mame Green that Equigenera is selling. So I'm gonna pop a picture right here of that plant and it kind of looks like it could be a match. So maybe this is a Mame Green and who knows what Mame Green even is, if it's a Mame or some other hybrid or unidentified plant, but it doesn't matter because I'm not planning to sell this plant anytime soon. So I don't really need to know the ID. I just love this new leaf. Look at that. It is so happy in the space that it's in right now. It lives in my tent on a lower down shelf with no direct light. It just gets reflective light from the tent wall in front of it. And you can see like all the, all the leaves are facing forward, nice and perky. It's crawling nicely on the substrate and it's in my pond lechuza, sorry, <laughs> lechuza pond perlite and orchiata mix rooted super well and it's just super happy so I don't really want to repot it but it's already crawling over the edge of the pot such an easy plant I just love it when you can figure out what a plant wants and it's growing happily um, and it's like sizing up slowly but surely I uh, love this plant so much so yeah whatever this is one of my current favorites where do I put you uh, next is a plant that I want to love and I think it has the potential to be one of my all-time favorites but it's not been the easiest for me to grow and size up but we're getting there so that's my philodendron glorious so I imported this plant about over a year ago, just over a year ago, I think. Um, and this, where is it? This is one of the import leaves here. And I've chopped it a couple times. 
And it, this used to live inside of my EXO. It was pretty well rooted, but it keep, kept giving me small leaves like this. But nice compact growth. And it just wasn't sizing up. So I one day I just moved it out of my EXO into a corner of my tent room where it only got kind of light coming out of my the EXOs around it, but no light directly on it. And I put it on this pole. And we're finally starting to see some size on the new leaves. So this was the newest leaf that grew in that dark corner. So a significant size up from the one before it, which is this one. I can't see what you're seeing, so I hope that it's showing the size difference. So it's growing steadily. It doesn't mind the low humidity whatsoever. I'm not getting any stuck leaves or anything. So I think um, hopefully this year I'll be able to get bigger significant leaves and my goals goals is to have a glorious like the size of James's James Armstrong slug plants he has the most amazing specimen that was grown inside his tent so that's why I'm I'm confused why this one didn't like my exo and I just don't really have space for it inside my tent so we'll keep it in the kind of dark corner <laughs> it's in for now and we'll see how it goes, but yeah, I'm starting to appreciate this plant again. I'm feeling hopeful for what it might look like in the future. Okay, and so it can't be a favorites type of video without showing a Gloriosum. So, I'm showing my Mama Gloriosum once again. This was in my first video, my 2021 favorites. Um, which one is it? This leaf has grown out since that video. It's just amazing. It's not sizing up very much, but it does seem quite happy in the spot that it's in. You can see everything's facing forward and it's starting to outgrow its pot here. You can see this one's already smashed up against the side. So I do need to repot this soon. It seems to really like this um, substrate that it's in. So my usual pond mix, but I have suspicions that this kind of high mineral content in this mix is making this substrate too alkaline and it's not able to take up the nutrients as much. That's, that's, uh, that's a guess that I have. I'm not sure. I will be doing my testing this week, so I'll find out for sure. Um, but either way, even without it being too big, it's still amazing. And then I have another Gloriosum to show, a slightly wonkier one, but also very cute. Um, this one was, I think a bottom cutting that I chopped a bit later than the other one. So it's a lot smaller. And again, like kind of all similar size leaves. This one is just finishing unfurling. I just love new Gloriosum leaves. And in the summer when we had probably 30 plus degree weather and my tent was just this like heat box. I was getting a lot of leaves like this on my Gloriosums. Pretty much everything was throwing a leaf like this. What uh, the sellers in Ecuador are calling zebra or like, what else do they call it? Um, silver, silver, silver stripes, something like that. So I didn't import this as any of those things. Um, but I was getting these kinds of leaves and I, I do think that it is affected by growing conditions and I have suspicions that it is temperature related because I've talked to people who live in tropical climates and they're able to get leaves like this all the time. And as soon as things kind of started cooling down here in the fall, all my leaves started looking more like this one. And I'm seeing as it's starting to warm up again, some of that is coming back here. You can see a little bit at the bottom how that little speckly white is coming back. So once it gets hot again, if in the spring it's about 20 degrees outside, it'll probably be closing in on 30 degrees in my tent. And if leaves are starting to show like that stripey um, venation again, then I'm gonna be more convinced that it is a temperature thing. But anyways, this one is also well overdue for a repot. This <laughs> completely stretched this pot now. So yeah, still probably my second favorite Gloriosum, even though it looks a little bit wonky. 
still super cute. Okay, enough about Gloriosums. Next one I wanna show, not my super favorite, but will always be in my collection. It is, I'll just show you, my philodendron tortum. I got this plant as a mid-cut. I believe it was unrooted. I don't really recall now. Um, it rooted quite easily for me. I find that sometimes tortums can be really hard to root, but just for me, I rooted mine in Lekka and it was just steady and quick, no issues there. Um, it hasn't been the fastest grower for me. I actually think I underwater this plant because the way I have it in my Millsville cabinet and it sits on a shelf, but the shelf kind of like hangs forward a little bit. So I think when I water it, it just kind of like drains out the front here without actually saturating the substrate. So I do have to keep an eye on that, but it has been pretty fuss free otherwise. This is the newest leaf here. So quite tiny. Um, I will have to probably repot it soon because I can see quite a few roots poking out the bottom and circle, circling around the side. But yeah, like I kind of, I kind of ignore this plant for a little bit and then I've rediscovered it recently and I'm just like, why don't I pay more attention to this plant? It probably would have been growing a little bit better. Um, one thing about tortums though, I've heard that they're super sensitive to cold. So don't try to get one in the winter time. Um, I've seen pictures where someone was growing it in an outdoor greenhouse they hit a cold snap overnight and the tortum just like severed itself. Like it, it beheaded all the leaves and they just dropped and it just turned turned itself into a stump. It looked like someone just came in and cut all the leaves off um, and tortums are known to do that. So yeah, do be careful with cold, but otherwise super easy grower. I do think you should grow it in high humidity though because all this dimension has a huge potential to get stuck anyways. Rekindling my love for philodendron tortum. What a cutie. Okay, next is a plant that I think is highly, highly underrated. And that is philodendron burly marks fantasy. So this is kind of like my, I guess my main plant. This was a top cutting off of my mother plant and I just wanted to experiment with having like a pretty pole wasn't sure how functional it would be, but I basically took this like aquarium wood, I think it's manzanita wood, and I tied clumps of sphagnum moss around it, and I harvested some live sphagnum moss and kind of tied it around it, and I think, I think this, <laughs> this moss is not doing so well. Um, I think they are slowly dying. It's really hard to keep this wet all the time, but yeah, I, I, if it if it dies off, I, I always have more live moss growing to add to this, but that's not the point. Uh, Burley Marks Fantasy is just so easy going and they're just so stunning. Like this is the newest leaf on mine. Very tiny, but nice and round and cute. I love how blue and shiny and like that finish of it almost looks like it's pixelated. But I wanted to show you um, my mother plant. So the plant that I took that from, I've been growing it for, I don't know, maybe close to close to two years now or a year and a half or something like that. So it's grown a ton for me. So this is it right here. So I lopped the top of it here and grew that other one separately. Um, it was getting a little bit bleached as it was climbing this pole. So I was like, well, now's a good time to get the top off. The top was showing a nice size up. And then uh, it immediately pushed out new growth. So this is the profile from that axillary bud there. Okay, so <laughs> look at this. And then also look at the leaf that was before it. And then I just wanna show you the leaf that came after this. Like, why, why are you so big? <laughs> I'm not complaining, but like, I was anno kind of annoyed to be honest, because like I just took the top off and then you gave me the biggest leaf I've ever grown. Um, just for size comparison. This is the, the leaf before it. That's the leaf after it. This was supposed to be a bottom cutting, but it doesn't even care. Yeah, I think this this leaf really, really shows that, that coloration that I love so much. 
And I just love how Burley Marks Fantasy just like the leaves just hang straight down, um, how the veins just kind of like drape so elegantly down. They're just stunning. I don't know why this one's taking so long to unfurl. I thought maybe it was a CalMag thing and I have been feeding it CalMag, so we shall see. It lives inside an EXO, probably at about 80% humidity. I'm not too sure because the hygrometer is dead, but used to be 80% humidity. But anyways, I will forever love this plant, um, but I extra loving it right now because of this monster. I mean, okay, I know there are tons in the States that are like this big. That is the goal, but this is an achievement for me. So yeah, love him. Okay, so next up is a plant that I showed in my favorites and it's always gonna be a favorite. This is my Philodendron Dean McDowell. This was the leaf that I showed in my favorites, but it was, I had just emerged and it wasn't hardened yet, but look how pillowy and delicious it looks. Oh, this plant just gives me no grief. It lives in my um, living room, actually just right behind me here, in probably 30% humidity. It's next to my balcony door, so it, it's cold. Plus there's a heater growing on beside it and it doesn't even care. It does push out quite a lot of extra floral nectar -y. Extra floral nectar. <laughs> but other than that, it just wants for nothing. It's in the tiniest little pot, super root bound, in a mix of Lechuza Pond and Leca. No perlite in this one. And it just gives no about anything. I always look forward to a new leaf on this guy because it just never disappoints. And it looks like we have a new one about to poke out here. Who else loves pulling off the catafils? It's very satisfying. It should be a catafil pulling ASMR. Satisfying crunching sounds. My boyfriend's gonna come home and ask, wonder why there's catafil everywhere. Now, nice and naked. Here's my other favorite leaf on this one. Woo, delicious. Okay, clean up, clean up this catafil pile. Next up, what do I have? Oh, right. This is also another plant that's not like one of my favorites. And I used to like actually not like this plant, but something compelled me to import it last year. So I did. And um, it started to grow on me. And then I kind of, I kind of like neglected it. It's in a really dark corner of my tent. And you're gonna see that it is a little bit reaching for the light, but I picked it up the other day. It had put out a new leaf and I barely noticed it, but this is my Philodendron Luxurians. So you can see that it is like growing kind of funky cause it's like ducking down to get light. So I, I have moved it since to a brighter spot. I just wanted to show you the newest leaf here. This was a bottom cutting of my import plant. So I, it had rooted and put out a new leaf. It was super cute. And I was like, I'll propagate this and probably sell the bottom, the front, the top cutting, even though it had a good amount of root, like probably this much, a whole bunch of them. It uh, just gave up on life and just melted into nothing. So I was left with my mother plant and it's growing back. I am making a vow to take better care of this plant give it better conditions, well, better lighting conditions and try to grow it nice and big because I actually really, really love Luxurian's Venation now that I have seen it in person. And I also love that pink tone at the back of the leaf. The texture is, I mean, it's very similar to like a Milano Chrysum, but I actually think it has more of like a pretty sheen to it. Like, I, I don't know if the camera is gonna pick it up, but it does have like a, a little bit of an extra dimension to the finish that I really, really love. So yeah, a reignited love and 
a vow to take better care of it. Okay, next up, this is a plant I also showed in my plant tours. So this is my philodendron roseocatophyllum. This was imported last year. Uh, I got two pretty big plants and then I got them, I think in May. And then in June, I went away on a work trip and then we got hit with the biggest heat wave of all time. So this plant suffered a lot. All my, uh, I think I had three rosea catafilms at the time. They all died back to a stump. I had to restart them. And this is about, what, how many, August? Seven months of growth. So not, not amazing, but it did take a little while to start back up. I actually don't feel like rosea catafilm has like quite had its day in the sun yet. I think that more appreciation is needed for this plant. It has a really pretty like matte, almost buttery finish to the leaves. Um, really pretty venation, really neat. When it gets more mature, as you can imagine, just more pronounced lobes. Um, it has really nice, pretty wide sinus sometimes. I do find the growth quite compact, so um, you can get like this bushy growth quite easily, except that oftentimes the petiole to the leaf size ratio is quite large, as in like the petiole is quite long. Um, some people might not like that, but I think it's really cute when you have that compact growth and they just like kind of all cluster together like a little bush. So like definitely a cute plant to have on a shelf or something like that. I think, or I hope this plant gets a little bit more popular this year. That yeah, Rosio Catafilm also sold as Philodendron Montanum, which is not the correct name, but it's often called Montanum. Is it just two plants left? Okay, so the next plant, this plant is one that I was so excited to get. And when I got it, I was just like head over heels in love with it. This is Philodendron heterocraspidon. So this was the newest leaf um, on the plant when I imported it. And it's just like an absolute dream come true. This leaf is actually snapped at the petiole. So right here, you can see where I've taped it. And it seems to have healed over just fine. Like it's been broken for such a long time and I don't see much decline on it. I will say this is a much harder plant to grow than most philodendrons. I think with these like really, really long, long leaf philodendrons, it's really hard to avoid, um, avoid damage when they're unfurling because they're just like, there's so much leaf to come out that the, when they bend, they bend on like a quite awkward angle. So um, that happened on this one, but it hardened off okay. This was one of the first, no, this was the first nice leaf that grew in my care. This was the first leaf that grew after import. So we went from this kind of wonky thing to this, which is much nicer. And it recently put out this, which is looking a little bit wonky. I'm not gonna lie, but I, if I recall correctly, this one looked like that too. So hopefully this hardens off nicely, but this is what I'm talking about. This one bent in the catafil as it was coming out. So we got little markings here and it lives in 90% humidity. And I have other strappy philodendrons that don't do this. <laughs> so it's kind of annoying that this one does it. Um, yeah, it, it, is, it is a little bit more difficult to grow. I've heard that from other people too, but I still love it all the same. Like I wanted this plant for so long, so I still feel very lucky to have it. But I also love how red the backs of the leaves are when they come in. Yeah, super pretty. And this kind of stays on the leaf for a little while um, before it kind of hardens off to green on the front. The back still has that blush of red. I'm, I'm super happy that it's growing for me right now. Even though it's not growing the most pretty, but it is growing. And last plant on the list. This is a plant that actually grows way nicer than the heterocraspidon, and that's my philodendron patriciae. So I think um, Patriciaes have like a bad rap for being divas or really difficult. I mean, I have heard horror stories of them not, like being really hard to propagate. I actually find based on my one experience with Patriciae that is quite easy going, at least compared to the other guy. This was the import leaf that Charmaine gave me with and it was a node maybe that long. Let me see. Yeah, you can actually see how how big the node was. It's just right here, super tiny. And it actually 
rooted just fine. I don't know if it had any roots to begin with, but it rooted really quickly in my tent. So then from this leaf, it popped out this little cutie already with a little bit of that pleating. And then this leaf came out after that, nice and dark. And then this one is just finishing hardening off. So a nice increase in size, you can see that. This is a plant that has no issue unfurling, has no issue coming out of the caterpillar. Um, I will say though that this is probably like my thirstiest philodendron. Is it my thirstiest philodendron? That's a bold claim. I do water this like every three days though, but it's also in a tiny pot. Do I wanna make that claim? Yes, I do. It's one of my thirstiest philodendrons, but that's okay because it's so easy going. I haven't had a brown tip off any of the new leaves and I'm super excited to see it grow big. Jing's Patricia, which she imported as a big plant, but has been growing so beautifully for her. I'm gonna throw a picture here. That is goals. I do need to get it on a pole at some point and maybe get it out of this moss, but it is so happy. So I'm not in any rush to do that. So yeah, last plant on my list. I'm absolutely loving my Patricia right now. I wish that my hetero would just take cues from my Patricia and grow a little bit more easily. What did I do to deserve you? Oh my God, I almost forgot. I missed a plant, I only did nine, and it's sitting right in front of me. My philodendron serpents, which has been absolutely dreamy these days. This is the newest leaf it just put out. How wonderful does he look? So I showed this in my first video too, about how this was a plant that really like benefited from CalMag and it's been getting consistent CalMag these days. It hasn't disappointed whatsoever. Um, I just absolutely love serpents. So first of all, I like hairy petioles. My boyfriend hates this plant so much. He says it looks like hairy dog d <laughs> Like The petioles are just like such a soft, furry, oh, it's such a nice um, texture to rub. <laughs> I'm actually not sure why plants evolved to have hairy petioles. I've read that it, it would kind of slow down the evaporation, but then this is so much more surface area. So I'm not sure if that's the reason for the serpents. Um, I've also read that it's to protect from pests. Like it's harder for the pest to get to the plant with all this hair in the way. That might be why. The sinus is just such a pretty shape. Like it has this like angle to it and that puffy texture around it. It has kind of like red venation. So you can see that peeking out here. It's very visible on the back of the leaf and the new leaves come in with this like golden peachy pinky hue. I'll throw up a picture of the new leaf as it was coming out. And that uh, peachy tint does stick around for a little bit. Um, it does still kind of have that like golden hue to it. I really, really love also the, the texture of the leaf blade. It's kind of like slightly, slightly metallic. It has this like satiny sheen to it is super gorgeous and i probably need to get this repotted soon we can see how like floppy it is in the substrate i need to build up the moss even though it's not climbing it has really nice short internodes and it's sizing up okay so this was the first first leaf after getting calmeg so that was nice not warped at all and then we had this leaf hardened off nice and dark and then the newest leaf here. So not a huge size up, but it is sizing up nonetheless. I can't wait for it to get giant, although I don't know where I'm gonna grow it because I do wanna grow it in a greenhouse environment. Um, the other plant I also want that looks super similar to this is the Squamicall or Squamicale. Um, I'll throw a picture of Jing's and just so you can see the comparison. They're super similar, but I think the Squamicall is a little bit darker or maybe it's just her conditions. Um, although the serpents I think is slightly hairier. I just think I need both in my life. Who is it? I think Gilberto. Yeah, it is Gilberto that has philodendron serpents chocolate. So I think, I may be wrong, but I think Charmaine put that on her import list. So we're gonna see what that looks like when it comes in. But I think the leaves have like a more coppery, bronzy tone to them. 
I don't know how long that sticks around for after the leaf hardens. But yeah, I almost forgot about this plant. I don't know how I forgot about it because this is probably like one of my most favorite philodendrons right now. My philodendron serpents. You're such a good boy. You're such a good boy. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I hope you enjoy like kind of these pointless videos every now and then. Um, as I said, the substrates video is coming. I will be working on that next week, I hope, to have it up the next Sunday. So if you have any questions you want me to cover in that video, feel free to leave it in the comments or DM me on Instagram. I will do my best to get to everything that people want to talk about. I'll probably have to break that up into more than one video. All right, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you have the best day ever and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.